This is an alien landscape so overwhelmingly massive that it defies comprehension. Canyons so deep and mountains so high that they are clearly visible from space. Somewhere in the middle of all this lies the future of humanity, a second home far beyond the Earth. This might be our most exciting vision yet for a colony on the planet Mars. Valles Marineris is the largest canyon region in the entire solar system. It splits the surface of Mars open like a giant scar across the equator that is clearly seen from orbit. This is how the region got its name, the Valley of Mariner, named for NASA's deep space probe Mariner 9, the first man-made object to orbit Mars. Arriving in 1972, Mariner created a detailed photographic examination of the Martian surface, mapping out around 70% of the planet's landscape and discovering both the deepest valleys and the tallest peaks in the known solar system. This network of interconnected canyons, troughs, and cliffs stretches 4,000 kilometers from east to west, which is approximately the same length as the continental United States. At its widest, the valley can cover 600 kilometers and reaches depths of up to 7 kilometers. The walls of the canyon reveal layers of rock in different types, colors, and compositions that provide clues into the ancient geological history of Mars. The floor of Valles Marineris contains a variety of geological formations, including landslides, debris flows, and sedimentary deposits. So this is all a much different Martian landscape than what we are used to seeing from the past three decades of Mars rover exploration, and that's simply because when it comes to landing safely and driving around in a remote-controlled car, we are going to choose relatively flat and easily traversable areas. The last thing you want to do is spend $5 billion to get a rover to Mars and then have it get stuck on day one. But if we're looking towards the future, when we have the technology to send people and large equipment to Mars, then the Valleys of Mariner is where the real action is going to happen. Now, how does a canyon like this even form in the first place? What natural force could possibly scar a planet so deep that becomes visible from space. The location of this valley is a key to unlocking the mystery. Valles Marineris acts as a connection between two vastly different regions of the Martian landscape. To the west is the volcanic Tharsis region, and to the east lies the chaotic terrain. Yes, that's a real term. Chaos terrain is unique to Mars and other alien worlds, but there's nothing comparable to it on Earth. What we are looking at is a landscape characterized by jumbled, broken, and highly disrupted rock formations. This terrain is often marked by irregularly shaped blocks of mesas surrounded by valleys or regions of collapsed material. The blocks themselves may be tens of kilometers across, several hundred meters in height, and can have steep, rugged sides. The formation of this landscape is still mostly unknown. The channels between the mesas could have been formed by the collapse of underlying material, possibly caused by the withdrawal of subsurface water or ice. This collapse can occur gradually over time or suddenly due to a triggering event like an impact or seismic activity. For the source of that seismic activity, we head west to the Tharsis region. Mars doesn't have tectonic plates, but it does have volcanoes the biggest in the solar system, and they are concentrated in one area. The four largest volcanoes of the region form a distinctive triangular shape, with the biggest of them all, Olympus Mons, at the tip. Again, the geological feature is so incredibly massive that it's clearly visible from outer space. One of the leading theories on how Valles Marineris was formed comes down to the sheer weight of that volcanic region and its effect on the crust of the planet's surface. Because Mars never had plate tectonics, its surface is like an eggshell. When you put excess pressure on one small section of the shell, you get a crack. So the mass of these giant volcanoes that accumulated over billions of years of eruptions eventually pulled down so heavily on the surface of the planet that it split open from the pressure, creating the giant system of canyons in the valleys of Mariner and potentially collapsing all of the dried up underground rivers in the nearby area that formed the chaotic terrain. 
We can see the most dramatic example of that fracturing in a region called Noctis Labyrinthus, or Labyrinth of the Night. Pretty badass name for an amazing location in the solar system. Noctis Labyrinthus likely formed due to a combination of tectonic, volcanic, and erosional processes related to the nearby volcanic region. The labyrinth is characterized by a crisscrossing network of canyons up to 30 kilometers wide and 6 kilometers deep, filled with mesas, landslides, and dunes formed by Martian winds. Noctis Labyrinthus acts like a kind of transitional region from the volcanoes of Tharsis into the epic canyons of Valles Marineris, and it's in between the labyrinth and the valleys that we find what we are looking for an ancient secret that was only revealed by planetary scientists in March 2024. Researchers have discovered a massive, deeply eroded shield volcano right where the Noctis Labyrinthus region meets Valles Marineris. It's been fittingly called Noctis Mons, or Mountain of the Night. The volcano is over 9 kilometers tall and 450 kilometers wide. Its gigantic size and complex structure indicate that the volcano has been active for a very long time and has become so eroded away at the surface that it's barely recognizable as a volcanic mountain. Although, it's thought that Noctis Mons has remained active even in relatively recent times. Now, here's what makes this discovery so interesting. Aside from the scenic location, in addition to the volcano, scientists have found a large, 5,000 square kilometer area of volcanic deposits around the volcano's perimeter. This terrain is thought to be a field of what they call rootless cones. These are mounds produced by explosive steam venting or steam swelling when a thin blanket of hot volcanic material comes to rest on top of a water or ice-rich surface. So, the idea is that this giant perimeter formed when the blanket of volcanic material came to rest on a glacier and reacted chemically with the ice. And the shape of these rootless cones suggests that the blistered volcanic blanket of surface rock could be hiding a vast sheet of glacier ice underneath. At minimum, we are talking about a glacier that is 6 kilometers long, 4 kilometers wide, and 2 kilometers thick. So a large quantity of accessible water ice is a very nice resource to have for any location where we want to set up a colony on Mars. And this is something that has been a very long-standing problem when trying to map out a future settlement. We know that Mars has gigantic ice caps at the North and South Poles, but those are probably the last places we would ever want to send human beings. The equator region is much more hospitable by comparison, where the temperatures can get as high as 20 degrees Celsius on a nice day. The downside being that water would have to be extracted from surface soil, which would involve a lot of work and energy for very little payoff. A subsurface glacier inside Noctis Labyrinthus would provide the best of both worlds, unlimited water that's easy to reach, and a tropical Martian climate. We also get some very sweet added bonuses from this environment. For one, we might have a very good chance at finding the remains of life on Mars. If we know that this volcanic region had a long-lasting interaction between lava and ice, that would have created an ideal breeding ground for simple bacterial life if it ever existed on Mars. This would be the place to find it. Secondly, there are a number of practical advantages to setting up camp inside a canyon on Mars. The lower that you get relative to the sea level of Mars, the greater the atmospheric pressure that you find. The average air pressure on the surface of Mars is about 150 times less than sea level on Earth, which is the biggest factor making the environment of Mars inhospitable. If we can get into the bottom of these deep canyons, then the ambient pressure would be something more like 90 times less than Earth, which would still cause your blood to boil, but it would be less of a differential that we have to deal with. It's also believed that the increase in atmospheric density will provide a higher level of protection from cosmic radiation. Again, not enough to make it safe, but anything that lessens the amount of deadly cosmic particles to deal with would be a plus. Also, being down in a canyon tends to provide a lot more protection from physical dangers like meteorites. The width of the canyon we choose will play a large part in just how much we can reduce the angles of attack from the outer space debris, but like we said before, anything that tips the odds in our favor is going to be very much appreciated. 
because the fact remains that there is no such thing as a safe place for life on Mars. It's an incredibly hostile environment that snuffed out all possibilities of natural life billions of years ago. But unfortunately, Mars is still the best option that we have for a second home in the solar system, at least until we find the capability to reach some far-off world like Saturn's moon Titan, but that would be a whole other video.